Hi, I'm Mike Siegel, along with Reed Pierce and Kim Davenport. This is episode five of the Legends of Billiards series, brought to you by the Pro Billiards Tour. We have a great one for you this time, Strickland versus Reyes. The guy from Manila can play more than just a little bit, Kim. Oh, well, there's no doubt about it. I'll tell you what, this is a, just a promoter's dream here in a professional billiard tour specialty putting great players on television and seeing great pool. Well, I'm looking forward to it and I'm excited. So it's Earl Strickland and Efren Reyes here in the finals with the Chesapeake Conference Center here in Chesapeake, Virginia. Here we go. Virginia. Now we'll have the light that Strickland on the <laughs> What is, I'd, I'd love to know what he was saying to us. He's probably saying something about, let's wait a minute, or maybe they got him on hold. I think he was saying something about Kim's hair. I don't yeah. know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, what, you were uh, one of the commentators in uh, this match, Kim. Uh, what was the deal with the hair? To me, you looked a lot like Fabio. Well, I can only tell you one thing. My wife loved it, and that's all that matters. <laughs> good answer. <laughs> Plus, I'm it looked good, Kim. It did. Thanks, thanks, buddy. Well, this was 55 years ago. Sure. I had long 55? This was like in the 1870s. Yeah, yeah. What was that? <laughs> I had long hair once or twice myself. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> all right, well, Earl wins a lag. Here we go. I'll tell you what, this guy, he plays. He is so good. This I think guy. Earl's almost over the line. Look how close Right, he look, he's looking, and he's telling Scott, come check, make sure that I'm not across the line. Look, that's exactly I, I what he's telling him. Earl's telling him something. Yes, he's Earl. telling him to come look and see that he's not across the line. Look, see, he's telling Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I saw it while ago. I was like, so he is no Look at Scott, see? You know, you're fine. And he and yeah, you're fine. Not strangers to one another. And here we go. Earl the Pearl. He's lightning in the game is thunder. Strickland made the uh, four ball. Well, he made one. and He's got a pretty easy shot at the one. Of course, the two six is a little funny. Let's see what happens here. Well, what he has here, two ball into there. Looks like he would probably uh, draw back towards the two and try to bust them open. And yeah, I think so. Yeah. Speak, I'm sorry. Speaking of Scott Smith, uh, he had been our tournament director for many years, and uh, Scott was a, a real good tournament director, and at one time, Scott could play. Yeah, I like Scott a lot. Man, he was a great yeah. guy. He made you feel comfortable at all times uh, at the events. He took care of all the players. He miss you, Scott. Yeah. And I, you know how much money it cost me having him rack? Because before a tournament, I'd always slip him a couple hundred, make sure you keep mine tight and my opponents a little loose. Not a lot, just a little. Appreciated that. Tom Kelly's uh, doing this uh, announcing for us. He was uh, a, a great front man to have for the two guys that did any commentary. He was there and he kind of just led us through the way and uh, he was a great, great friend of the Pro Bears Tour and he has since passed. I mean, he was a great friend that we used to go. He was a member at uh, Riviera Country Club out in Los Angeles and he used to take us there quite a bit. Wow, and at nice. the time I had lived out in California and, uh, and we, sh we sure do miss Tom. Yeah, Tom, miss you, buddy. Yeah, I never, never actually met him. This was 97 now. The tour started, I think, 91, correct? 1991, the tour started, and everybody was excited. Uh, uh, we used to have some tournaments back, well, the 70s and the 80s, I mean, but we never really had no organized tour. It was promoter uh, going and promoting tournaments without uh, any say of anything. The promoter would have the tournament, you would pay your entry fee, and uh, whatever they said went pretty much, we were just kind of like a band of gypsies running around and uh, playing for somebody else. And then when the tour came along, it was all different. It changed everything for us. I mean, we started producing our own shows. That's why we're here today. Right if it wasn't for the Pro Bears Tour, we would have none of this great titanic treasures that we have now coming, coming out of our archives. I mean, and I'm, I'm excited to get back to it. And like I said, this was some 30 years ago, uh, 31 years ago that it started. And, uh, and it, players didn't pay no entry fee. I mean, we, we, we was getting some great perks. Every year it grown, it grown, it grown, it grown every year. And, uh, and everybody was just so happy and, and we were rolling, baby. Yeah, I want to give a shout out to Don Mackey because, uh, you know, uh, he was the one that got the Pro Bears Tour started. And uh, in 1994, he did something special for me. I'm not gonna really get into it, but he, well, he, he waived my entry fees and that was big for me, but Don was the reason we're here today, and you know he he took it to to a level, and 
you know, and then finally there was a little break up there, but we don't get into all of that. But we we missed the old Pearl Bridges tour. Well, we're, we're, we're here now, and uh, we're going to have some great things coming. ProBilliardsTour.com. You can relive everything that happened. The greatest pool with the greatest pool players ever assembled in a generation of players. So, folks, you need to go to that website, ProBilliardsTour.com. As we watch Earl, just he's, he's <laughs> amused at the simplicity of this game. I mean, all he does is just walk up there. He's like he's playing... Uh, uh, yeah, we haven't seen Ray. Tink, tink, tink. No, nope. he hasn't even been there. Looks like he's going to start off with a two racks. Uh... But Earl won the lag, ran the rack, and now he's going to run another rack. So the lag is an important part of, of nine ball. Very, very important. You know, it's funny because I don't watch pool today with these younger guys. And I, don't know, I, I still think this era had, I mean, players. The, 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 these are like, you know, champion world class players. Uh, I think that by far, I enjoy watching some of these matches, maybe because I'm, you know, bringing back memories. I'm not sure, but I really enjoy watching this. I can't watch the guys. Today. <laughs> you know, the, I don't even, yeah, I haven't really watched much uh, pool in 15, 20 years. But, uh, you know, we got two different type styles here between these two guys. Uh, like Earl, in my opinion, uh, power player, big break, sh sh shoots hard, straight shooter, and then you got. What I consider a finesse player in Efren Reyes, uh, probably the greatest, one of the greatest, if not the greatest player of all time, more of a finesse player, you know. Uh, what do y'all think? Yeah, no, totally. I mean, Earl, I played both of them many times. Earl was the most explosive player. You never felt comfortable. A guy like Ephraim, usually when I got ahead, I felt like I was going to win. But with Earl, no matter what the score was, I was always in jeopardy. I didn't feel comfortable until I had the last game. And as you're seeing here, I mean, he, he could blow through a guy, and before he even knew what happened, the match was over. Yeah. And, that's, you know, that, 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 that's the, and he's a tough guy to play against. Puts a lot of heat on you. Yeah. Very true, Mike. Very true. He really off-hit those balls there. Didn't, didn't come up dry. That's so, not like Earl to come up dry off the break. Let's see what he does. Now, see, I re well, I'm not going to say what happens, but I think this was a... Uh, this is his first opportunity, is that correct? Yes. First time at the table. Okay, so first time at the table, um, I think he makes a really crucial mistake here. And we'll see. What I think he was trying to hit the eight going in. Uh, I don't know. But that, you you got to hit it way harder than that, no matter what you something. do. I mean, you can't hit it that speed. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't know what he was doing there. I know one thing. It's easy sitting in this chair. Yeah, I've never that, missed a ball. Just, yeah. <laughs> I tell you that much. But that was a, that was a big shot your opening shot you know what i mean and he hit it i don't think he was trying to do that but that pumps up earl even more you know? yeah because i mean it's 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 two nothing if you know if everyone would have got on the deuce there uh he's probably out he makes it two one he might have broken runner rack or two who knows could have made a different match here uh, now he's got himself in bad trouble and now here's the greatest kicker on the planet let's see what happens and he misses the whole ball <laughs> <laughs> it might be the first one he's ever missed, I'll tell you that. Uh, so let me, now, uh, uh, let, let, let's go back many, many years ago. Okay, so I know when I started playing, you know, I loved pool. I was young. First thing I ever did, my son, Trevor, looking right at us. It's a gift, you know. So I picked up a cue. I started playing. Uh, I never went to college. But as I got a little older in my teens, I realized it was a great way for me. To, for me. I made a lot of money, never was not money in my pocket and over the years i traveled around won money i loved it didn't lose that much and then when tournaments started coming not the pro tour but some of these events they did have a pretty good amount of tournaments started playing in that i got endorsements this and that and that's that's kind of the way i developed but i have a feeling that almost all pool players came up in a, a similar fashion i mean it's the only thing you could do because in golf let's put it that way you you practice, then you go to the golf school if you get good enough. You qualify, then you're on the pro tour. Yeah. And that's what they're striving for, right? right. But, well, but in pool, it's not unless, like that. Like in golf, unless you're just pure good enough at an early age, a lot of the guys come out and they, they don't have to go through the school. They're just straight good enough right off. No, I think they have to qualify. Now, don't, well, Kim, you know more about that than I do. Don't they go to the, 
What's that smaller tour well, first? You can get an exemption, and if you do good, then you can you can carry on without going to the qualifying school. Right. Oh. But but what what the deal was is about not very many of the top players uh, went to college. I know Nick Barner went to college, and I think maybe a couple of the other guys, but none of the really really great players went to college. My college and your college and your college was going out and getting seasoned, our season was college, was gambling and, 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 and playing for money. And that's how I learned to get better. Yeah. I always wanted to play a better player. I, I, I wasn't, I, I don't want to say that I didn't want to win, but I didn't mind losing if I would learn something. Right, of course. Oh, very good point. I played Larry Hubbard. Now, he was from my hometown. At that time, I couldn't beat him. But we would play, not a lot of money, a little bit of money, but I played him for months and he kept beating me. <laughs> he took that money, you know, but then eventually I started kind of holding my own and so on. And that is the experience and the pressure that I, you know, developed my game, of course. The experience was invaluable. Yes. You can't get that experience in school. Well, here's another thing that we have never even looked at. In pool, there is no form. And what I mean by that is, Again, I compare pool to golf. In golf, there's a certain swing, and if you take lessons from a golf instructor, he will tell you immediately what you're doing wrong, something in your swing, your plane, your whatever. Pool, every, every motion, some guys are close, some guys aren't. Keith McCready, sidearm, this guy's chin is on the cue, this guy's chin is on. There's really no... Like, here's how you do it, right? I mean, does that make sense? Well, it's, it's when you come in, when, I always thought that your elbow to your arm was the only thing you should move. And when you come into the ball, you need to be coming in straight. And it's hard to hit that white ball with that little Q-tip right exactly where you want to hit it. Well, what you're saying is, okay, that part, yes. In other words, when you hit the cue ball, I think all professional players hit it a certain way, just like in golf. In golf, when they come down and hit the ball, they're all in the same area where Jim Furyk is doing this and this guy's here and this guy's there. But when they hit it, they're all in the exact same position. Pretty much. Pool is the same thing. When you hit the ball, you follow through. Your hand is going towards the thing. But all the other stuff in pool, that's why it's so difficult to really learn how to play pool. I mean, today you got videos and so on. When I grew up, there was no such thing as the internet. So I either watched a few guys <laughs> or I just did it, you know, experimented. You know, I picked up the cue, started hitting balls, and didn't really think much of it. Wait, there was no internet? Huh? There was no internet? No. There, and, <laughs> How old are you? And guess what? Huh? There, there wasn't automobiles when I grew up. Yeah. I'm oh, going yeah. back. You know, we used to have to hunt for our food. Then, you know, I'd have to go fishing, catch my fish. Yeah. I have to walk 10 miles to school. Oh, All right. Now, oh, take it easy. Least. East, you guys were luxury. You lived in Rochester and you lived in Modesto. You guys had a someone that y'all could play against that was a, you know, somewhat of a player. You were against top players all the time, and I know you were against really good players. I myself, I lived in a town where there were no really good pool players, so it was really difficult for me. So what I had to do was I had to travel and play for money to learn. I didn't have the luxury of having somewhere anywhere in, in my state at all that right. could teach me anything. Really and where, where are you from? Jackson, Mississippi. Well, there you go. See, that's, <laughs> well, I hey, think I went great through town, that. Great town. Yeah, well, you better be glad you didn't stop where I was at. No, I'm joking, Mike. <laughs> so, yeah, but again, you know, I always keep saying people, you know, hear this, but I think I, me, I had a tremendous advantage because in my home pool room. You had two or three of the greatest players in the world, and I got to watch them, and I think that was a tremendous asset, regardless of what they played. I saw the what they did, you know, they're playing nine ball or some other game, and they get into a six. Oh, geez, like, like that shot with Earl with the one ball. Is he going to do this? He, oh, look how we did that. Well, right. that, it's, it's a big advantage. It's the experience of learning. So here, now, if you really want to learn how to play the game the correct way, you're going to go to the Pro Billiards website, probilliardstour.com. We will have tips of the week. The three of us are going to share secrets that have never been seen and will definitely improve your game. And if not, Don Mackey, the commissioner, said each person gets $500 if their game doesn't improve in one hour. <laughs> I don't want to put Don on the spot, but... That's what he had told me. That's, a, that's how <laughs> confident they are that the tip of the week is going to definitely improve your game. So go to the website, probilliardstour.com. I didn't realize, but 
What's the score? Three to none? Earl has had two it or might three be, rolls. It and, might be like five nothing. Well, he, whatever it is, he's had some really fortunate rolls here the, uh, the last few games. I don't know. Y'all had not really been paying attention. Yeah, I haven't been really more. I've been listening and talking, but he's gotten lucky. Like right here, he just butchered the six. And, he, and that's how he left them? Yeah, he left it. Well, there. No, yeah, but for Ray, is this no, he made the eight. It's Earl's shot. No, it's Efren's shot. Oh, I'm sorry. Efren's kick. Okay. Efren's Would you apologize to me if I'm wrong? Let's yes. see what happens. Yes, Efren's kicking. Who's shooting? No, Earl. Efren. Oh, Efren? Oh, yeah. okay. Yes, Efren's kicking. That's Earl's shooting. No, I can't. Oh, no, it is Ray's. Oh, yeah. okay. Let's see what happens. Well, I already apologized to you. So. Watch this. Yeah. See, I mean, yeah. oh, Ef, I mean Earl, Earl, not strike three. No, I'm kidding. I mean, Ephraim is, you know, I, I, it's amazing how well he kicks. I mean, you know, but we're, we're joking because he did a couple and, you know, kind of made a mistake. But, hey. I'm just he saying, he, he got a couple fortunate rolls here. This match could have been a little different yeah. early on if he hadn't have caught those rolls. I mean, you know. Well, like if, you know. well, you know, Ephraim, you know, you, you played him in one of the matches, but it just seems that – Here's what happens. A pool, a lot of it's like memory or so on. You know, he won the first time he played in the U.S. Open. Then the next two times he lost. So that will work on you, okay, like that, especially playing a guy like Earl. He gets a few games behind, and I'm sure his mind is thinking, oh, it's 4 nothing. I mean, so, you know, you, you get negative is what it is. Even if, you, if you're shooting okay, your brain will get negative, and when you think like that, bad things happen, and that, that, that's kind of, I think, what's going on with Ray is. So when we're talking about kick shots, kick shots is when you cannot see the object ball that you're shooting at, the lowest numbered right. ball, so you have to go to the rail or multiple rails to hit the ball. Right. And I think we, we're all in agreement that Efren may be or probably is the, the greatest kicker that, I, that I've ever seen anyway, for sure. So. Yeah, he does that. But in this particular match, twice he kicked and, and sold out. That's correct. That's correct. <laughs> but, no, I, I mean, I, I, you know what I did? I had not, no, this is a good sidebar. <laughs> okay, I told this to Nick Varner and some other players. I started playing Reyes in matches. Okay, so here's what happens. You guys don't even know this one. I don't know if I should wake you up to this. So here's what happened. I played the most unbelievable safe on Reyes you ever saw in your life. I mean, I'm not talking behind a ball where I know he can hit the rail and hit it. I'm talking he's got to go north to hit the ball south. That means minimum two rails. Every time I did something like that, he either kicked me safe or made it. And I got so aggravated with that, and I was Nick Varner and I used to kind of take a little piece of each other. I looked at Nick, I go, I'm over this. He goes, what do you mean? I go, I'm just going to let him hit it. I won every game. So I put him rail to rail. I won every game. All right, let's watch I, I, this I took shot. the kick out. Let's watch this it's shot. That's a true story. This is Earl Strickland, the, the greatest jumper of all times, bar none. The greatest. With his own cue. And he missed it. Well, he, he hit the ball, but what I'm saying, he's the greatest jumper of all time. Yeah, you know, that's another thing. With his own thing. cue, no. bar none. Yeah, well, uh, here's what happens. So now, all of a sudden, they come out with what I can't stand, the jump cue, which all of a sudden, every here's a guy who has a talent of jumping the ball, probably the best there ever was, with his own cue, on a sheer cloth, which is really tough. And then when the jump cue came out, he looked like a fool. Because now everybody's, you know, I, I did not agree with that. That's just me. I mean, I, I thought it, it took something away from Earl. It's like a guy in golf can hit a 400 yards and they come out with some tricky ball or club and everybody does it. Right? I mean, that, that was, my, you know, I mean, I, I, I think if a guy can do an amazing feat. Yeah. Oh, so we are now hearing, they're signaling like this, that on the Pro Tour, they banned the jump cue. Almost everywhere else in the country today, and I'm sure people watching that play pool have a jump cue or handle. But in the Pro Billiard Tour, they banned it. So What year was that? Uh, well, yeah, when, when did they do that? Was it 95? Uh, five or six, I think. Was it three? Was it really? Well, I never had one, so I don't know. Okay, and I never could use one anyway. I, you know, my ex-girlfriend, Megan Smith, she could be this far from the ball. Here's the cue ball and the one that far away and jump it. Take a shaft. Yeah. Jump it over the ball. I go, what? 
I go, you know, you can't. How are you going to play safe when someone can jump in there that far from the ball? I, I go, D -d 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 that's taking the whole thing. She did it all. Oh, it aggravated me because I. She goes here, just do this, and I never could do it. He just missed that ball about as bad as I ever seen him. Who's that? Ball early. Yeah, but he he had a tough shot, but he did miss it. He missed it like this far. Yeah. Okay, let's see what's well, going on. It's four nothing. Ephraim better yeah, yeah. Uh, he better make the ball it. here. Ephraim really has has not pocketed a ball. Hardly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think he's made a shot yet. Right. He made the one ball and snooking himself, but That's he's had plenty right. of shots. Look at this. But that was a bad shot. Yeah. I, I'm feeling the heat myself. <laughs> how you about, better come with this shot. How about that table? That black Brunswick table might be, oh, the, best table. Diamond. Might be the best looking table. Might be the best looking table of all times at Brunswick. Look. What do you think? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. no, the, huh? the Brunswick? Oh, the Brunswick. Close, yeah. The black Brunswick. I worked for Brunswick for five, six, seven years. When they came out with the, they came out with that during my time. It's like in the 80s up till early 90s. And then they came out with the four by eight. Uh, uh, for a home, you know, four by eight, gold crown, black and the regular one. And Jim Bakula, who was the pre he was the greatest guy in the world, the president of the Brunswick division. Uh, he was just, I love the guy. And they quoted me for their commercial and it said, Mike Siegel says the four by eight, the medalist, that's what it was called, plays just like the gold crown, which is... <laughs> But Earl it, just shot two shots back to back and missed both of them at least a foot. I don't know if you were watching. Were you watching him? I've well, seen it when he over. He's too far ahead. Yeah. Uh, you, you know what happened? Nothing, right? Look at this shot. There's not, this you know is what, no good. You know what this happens no good. when a player is giving you what opportunity? Is, what is that from doing here? Yeah, he's, I'm sorry, Mike. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but... I mean, I, I can't believe he's he's fainted. Bad. He knows brain lock. He knows you can't come up short here. Brain lock. on that shot, right? It's the wow. mind. The mind is a terrible thing to waste. I mean, it's just sometimes you get brain dead and you, you can't see the obvious. That's what it is. Well, I think sometimes too you have to stop thinking to know, right, just to to know what you know. You right. Know what I mean? right. Hey, the first time I played on television, I was helpless. Helpless. I mean, I, I, I missed everything I shot. Yeah, I think I was. I remember too. that. So, you know, I mean, I can identify. It's a shame, but that's what happens. Pool is very tough. You can't get rid of your nerves. You know, he plays a good shot there. Yes. But you can't get rid, like you were saying again, I'll do the golf analogy. In golf, you can walk down the fairway after you hit it and kind of get your your body and get the nerves out and pull you're sitting there yeah but in golf in, in golf and, and other uh like not golf golf's like pool uh but in pool really when you shoot only thing that moves is from your elbow down to your arm right. so you really have a every everybody every every part of your body is still so you have a lot of nerves that can be jumping right. on you you know when you're playing golf every every part's in motion right so you you know if one part stops with the other cart keeps it going we're in pool, you just, you know. Well, if you're jittery like me, I would talk and that would release, you know, people thought I was sharking my opponent. I was releasing my energy, okay? But in pool, if you're sitting there and you're not doing that, it's very difficult. See, I don't know what he's doing there. I play it safe. I know, but I don't like that shot. To me, I would have went, I would have spun it out of here, here, back, and I, I think he's so it. weak that he didn't like that. Uh, well, I mean. You know what I mean? That That's my opinion. I think he let yeah, him, he, he can let, hit this ball. Yeah, it looks like he might can. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that's not a bad. He just didn't quite hit it perfect. I just. No, he kicked it. Look at this. And scratched. Uh, now, here, if Reyes doesn't get out here, stick a fork in him, right or wrong? Oh, he I, has I, to get out this rack. And it's not a difficult. He's got ball in hand with five balls on the table. Six, seven, I mean, right? Oh, I see what I it does. Shouldn't be no problem. Well, let's hope he can reach the six. If he gets straight on it, that's his, the opposite side. Okay, he's perfect. There you go. Scratching the side? No. Look at the no, style. You ever notice how the, the Philippine player... Look at this. Wow. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Ephraim, what are you doing? You don't play like that against me. <laughs> Man. He, He's still out. He needs, to, he needs to really get out here. He's in trouble this match. He's not playing good at all. No, you know, you see how he jumps up after he shoots it? A lot of people do that. Yeah, but look not, at his position. He's way out of position. He's cinching it. What, what are you going to do? He started with ball in hand. I know. 
And so far, he's made two trick shots, and this is an automatic. They should get out. Though. Yeah, especially when you haven't won a game. Aha! Uh -huh. I predict he wins this game. Yeah. <laughs> nice prediction. Thank you. You're going out on a limb, aren't you? I'm going way out on a limb. <laughs> All right, win. All right, let's let's see. We get a match going. What's the score? Four to one, I do believe. Uh, four to one. It's not out of it. They're playing eleven, right? Oh yeah, the match is just getting started, really. Yeah. If you think about it. Well, most matches. I mean, my you know experience is you always want the early lead, and somehow you know it's like the Super Bowl. Same idea. The team that scores first, don't they normally win? I mean, they're more than 50% of the time the team that scores first. I'm pretty sure that's a fact. I don't know what the percentage is. If I had, you know, the right crew here, they'd be looking it up for me, but I don't. <laughs> now, they tap the balls down there. I don't know if you noticed that on the rack, but the, the referee was tapping the balls down, and that is to keep them froze. You want all the balls frozen in place. Ah, uh, you see how easy he hit those? What was that about? Come on, Ephraim. You see what he did? He bunted them. Well, he did that to me in April. I told you in that match. He's kind of just a little, he's off. Yeah, he's off. Yeah, he's, I think, you know, he's like in, uh, not shock, but he's like uh, uh, brain lock. That's what I call it. I've been there. we all been there. What is Earl doing? Oh, my goodness. Look at that shot. I mean, that looked like he was going to play in the side. He cuts it in the corner. I mean, he got some issues on this rack. Well, if he makes this ball, the three's down by the corner, isn't it? Uh, the two looks like he... He's up. looking to look at like he might shoot it back over here, possibly, and now they're not. Oh. That's the three there, right? No, the three's here. The three's underneath. Defense is a big part. Mm. Really, he, uh, he's a shot maker, though. He likes the offensive game. Nice shot. Where's the three? Right there by his cue. Ball. Oh, right in the side. That's not right. That was, a, that was some shot really there. Yeah, there like that. I, know. I don't know how he did that, really. I don't either. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't even, I don't know that he was really playing that. I don't know what he was doing there. Yeah. Well, sometimes, you know, you got to, you know, he hit and whatever. I, yeah, I guess he maybe felt like. Well, he knew he, he knew he hit no matter what. He knew if he, knew if he hits the ball, he wasn't going to get right, a and I think he had an easy safe. He could have hit the edge of the ball. Was he going to do draw him under these balls? I don't know. What he he just knocked it. Oh, wait, look at that. Boy, that was it. nice. He missed it. No, he didn't. Oh, my God. I'm not, I was watching him break the balls out. I think that's hard to believe he missed that. He didn't hit it bad. You know, Ray is, you know, we played that big match. I mean, it's got the more views on, uh, on uh, YouTube, which we are going to start a YouTube channel. My, uh, we have a YouTube channel, so we'll tell you more about that later. But Reyes and I played an incredible match, and uh, he crushed me, yeah, of course. But uh, well, you were at, you had been retired for ten years or yeah, more before that match even uh, happened. They made me an offer I couldn't refuse. <laughs> but it was enjoyable. But Reyes, he didn't play that great. I'll tell you that right now. Of course, he was much older, also. But he did break kind of soft, and I kept, we were playing eight ball, and I kept digging a grave, and I couldn't quite get out every game. I remember that. Of course, I, I could have won the second set. But that was a U. It's, that's the biggest view of all matches. I think it's over 12 million views. So that's uh, interesting. That was an what was that shot? shot? That was to give position. He can't. He had to get back uh, down for the fight. Well, look what happened with the. Look what happened. He had the balls like up. It, yeah. That's what happens. See, you can't. Uh, I've been there. But don't worry. We've all been there. He's going to shoot right-handed, left. What do you do here? You go hit it and come straight down at the balls. I, I think he's going to try to get underneath it myself. Really? You talking about coming back over? I would just right? cut it and try and go right into him. You know, one rail, just go right into him. I agree with you, Mike. I would not go left of the nine. I mean, I'd come in like Heck you know, no. like this. Oh, he's going. He's drawing it. I don't you know. What go he, three rails. At I don't it. know what he's three doing. rails. No, oh my gosh. goodness! Why what would you do this? this? Don't go underneath it. That was crazy. <laughs> it was pretty good. Yeah, but I don't see. Could it? I mean, I don't know. Well, I know you would have played safe because I know you don't I, take I chances. Gone, like, I would have come. Well, that's why. That's what makes pool in these situations. What's he gonna do? Put him under the. He's net gonna play ball? safe. Yeah, put him under the. Net. Now he's playing he safe. He overhit it. 
He overhit it. Look. Yeah, he left him a piece of it. He can see it. He... Why would he hit the five and come down on that side of the nine where it come on the other, right on the other side? See, I'm looking right here to go real thin and maybe try to get behind this ball. Y'all maybe probably thinking something. Might, maybe gonna, the ball goes. He might shoot it. Maybe it goes. I, I didn't realize he could make it in the side. I think he'll shoot it in the Maybe side. shoot it in the corner. If it sticks out, he's going to shoot it. Well, sure. I didn't realize he could see that much of it. Nice that shot. shot. That's a great shot. Yeah, he had to hit it that hard to avoid scratching, I think. No, look, this is no easy shot. Yeah, really, I mean, it do. looks like it's straight in, but yeah. the cue ball's on the rim. He's going to fall her down for the eight. How, how long did it take him to shoot it? Not very long. Uh oh. He made it. Oh, oh my gosh. I can't wow. believe that ball went in. Those are nine inch pockets. I can't believe that fall. Ball I know. Fell. Isn't that unbelievable? Not from that angle. Earl plays pool like his hair is on fire. Look, and Lee's way. I mean, he's out of line. <laughs> Earl. Uh, Earl's still out there. Earl's still out playing, huh? Yeah, he's still out Look at Barry. He There's missed Barry Burm. Oh, yeah, Barry Burm. He missed that seven, though. Don't you think? I mean, he. Well, I, yeah, he did, but sometimes you catch him just a little yeah, off right. and they'll go in. You the know. speed, you know? I love Norfolk. You know what I love about Norfolk? The food. They have yeah. crab, they have shrimp, they have seafood. We used to go down to uh, the by the beach there. Uh, Virginia I, Beach. Yeah, I, could, I couldn't wait. You know, normally I usually played like 7 or 9 o'clock at night. Whichever one it was, I would prepare the day for the food. Forget the match. So, so you, you won your match so you could... Eat oh yeah. The next night, basically, because what you're yeah. telling me. Yeah. Well, if I played at nine, I ate at like five thirty. If I played at seven, then I ate at like nine thirty. Yeah, like, but but you would have had to pl keep playing if you would have been on the loser side. See what I'm saying? But I wasn't on the loser well, side. Well, that's what I'm saying. So you made sure and win your match. So yeah, you of could course. Get dinner is the, what I'm trying to say. The food put more pressure on me than anything else. Tell me if I'm wrong, Mike. Uh, I think I've seen you fishing in the. Uh, Creek in Channel, Norfolk. In the Creek Channel behind the Hall I, I did fish. I used to bring, in fact, right. a couple times I brought my boat with me. Yeah. But uh, I would always bring a fishing rod. I had a five-piece rod. You caught a big bass in there one time, didn't you? I, I think I caught some good. Me and Buddy Hall. Buddy Hall loves yeah. to fish. Uh, we used to catfish, all this stuff. You were but, a bass fisherman. Yeah, but I went to Buddy's house many times, and uh, we went catfishing. You got a hot dog, stick it on there, throw it in. Well, but I live in Florida to fish. That's why I, I live there. I love the fish. That's Didn't you and I take a trip fishing in 1990? Yes. Where, yeah. Where, where, Alaska. Go? Alaska. He, he, Thank you very much. We're in the wilderness. We see bears and moose all over the place. So I'm out there all by myself. It's getting dusk. It's like 11 o'clock at night. And he, he rattles a tree limb above me. Could have been, could have been a, 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 you know, a bear. Grizzly. Yeah, he, and I'm looking around like, what the? And I'm all by myself. <laughs> we had a great time, though. Yeah. How many fish? I oh, took Rempy kept, there. Kept fishing, kept fishing, catch, 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 catch. It was like, throw them out, you catch them. I took Rempy that Look at this. Oh, my God. Look at that. I took Jim Rempe there one time, and we went fishing. So over the years, I told him how great this trip was. A lot of guys would get me to do an exhibition, and then for my fee, they'd take me out fishing, get a thing and all that. So I go to Alaska. I went there about six, seven times in a row, years. So I told Rempe over the years, he, oh, take me, take me, take me. So after telling him all the stories about the fish we're catching and, you know, you know all that, we get out there, first day, we just kill them. We caught so many fish, you couldn't reel them all in. So I looked at him at night, and I said, what do you think about the fishing trip? There I am, and Johnny Archer. <laughs> you sure are. Look how young Archer is. Look at this. So Jimmy looks at me, he goes, I, 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 well, it was a long time ago. I didn't get to the punchline. I'm sorry. I'm Jimmy sorry, looks at me, and he goes, you under-exaggerated. <laughs> That's what he told. I never forgot. But wasn't that great fishing? Sure uh, was. Forget I mean, it. Jim, I apologize to you. <laughs> my, hair was, my hair was pretty long there, my son. Yeah, it looked like it. I mean, you know, it did, didn't it? Earl. I don't remember what was sitting there. Boy, is he getting lucky. Look at this, Earl. <gasps> Boy, is he. Look, he freezes him on the pole. Look at that. 
That's unbelievable. Great defensive pool, and when given the opportunity, just yeah, I enjoyed fishing. This year was horrible fishing in Florida. They sprayed and whatever they did, everybody was complaining. You know, they have the spawn is in the winter time. Right. Catch monster bass, ten pounders. Seems like every time you look around, Ephraim is uh, hooked. I wonder. I wonder if there's some people we should be acknowledging here that are watching this, like our friend Mr. Rempy and Sally. Huh? What do you think? I, they're out there somewhere. Hey Jim, how you doing? Jimmy, I'll tell you a story. A couple of stories with Jim. Jimmy was actually. I idolized Jimmy. I had, he, in 1977, I had just started playing. He came to Sacramento was in the finals. And I, just something about Jimmy that I love. So who, who would have figured, you know, 20 years later, I'd be going out to dinner with him and doing all this stuff with him. And I remember we were in Dallas playing in a, in a tournament. And we, we'd been quite chummy for years. And, and he's, somehow it happened, let's room together. And, and, okay, Jim. So we, we get a room and, and I'm out and he's, he's, uh, he's in bed. And I come in and it's like, I don't know, nine o'clock. So I'm just laying around. He says, well, it's about time for the TV to go off. And I, I says, well, what do you mean, Jimmy? He said, we need to turn the TV off. I says, we better call the front desk. And he says, what do you mean? I said, you need to get you another room. I says, when I check in, the TV stays on, and when I check out, it goes off, period. Five, six days in a row, it never goes off. So he went and got another room, basically. Now we're telling stories like that. That makes me come up with one now. There's a couple guys on the tour that are, let's say, I'll just say they're a little frugal with their money. And those two guys are Jim Rempe, and uh, Nick Varner. So, as the story goes, when they have the trade shows in Vegas, you know, at six o'clock in the afternoon, when the trade show's over, now everybody goes into the main hotel, they're all in the lobby having a drink or so, and all of the guys, like Brunswick has their crew, and this company has their crew, and they're bringing everybody for the big dinner. You know, this could be a Morton's, you know, five, eight people, you're talking 1,000, 1,500 for dinner. So Rempy gets all dressed up, you know, and I see him in the lobby. I go, what? Uh, I go, and I had my own crew with me. I said, what are you doing? He goes, I'm looking. I go, you're looking. I go, what are you looking for? He goes, I'm looking for a backer, you know, for dinner. So he's hovering around hoping that one of the entourages says, hey, Jimmy, we're all going to a steak dinner. You want to come? Oh, uh, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll join you guys. <laughs> oh, if it would have been me, I'd had to starve to death. No. Well, he got so good at it that he could pick his meal. See, if they were having Italian, they were having steak, and he felt like fish, he'd like be on the you know ear and he'd hear the right meal that he wanted, and that's how he would get it. Very good. Huh? You better hope that's Jimmy's not story. watching this. He'll laugh at it, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little bigger than you, isn't he? He's older though, isn't he? Oh yeah. I think we need to give a shout out to a great friend of ours, Gary Firestone. Uh, for doing a great job of all the production of all these uh, great shows over the years too, Kim. Yeah, it, no doubt, and, and uh, Gary is a, I'm sorry, Reed. No, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say, he's a pretty good pool player in his own right. So I've yeah. had a few balls with him before and he can make balls, and he did really know how to direct the cameras to make sure we got all the great shots. No question. Thank you, Gary. Great guy, and yeah, he, I played a game or two with him myself last night. Uh, he, he really, really, really... He's here at, at this event. This has been like 30 years producing this. So look at the IQ stats. I'm sorry to hear he's here. Yeah. He's here now with us doing the production on this also. So thank you, Gary. You, did you see those Accu stats we're bringing up now? It was the Earl was playing. 860, I think. Uh, 680. Six, uh, 640, I thought. Yeah. 48 or something. That's not good. Normally, now, I think when the... I think what? High eights, early nines. Is, yeah, you is, use, is you're the, playing good. Yeah. What, was, playing what good. was the? I didn't, I didn't it was 860, which is not that mm -hmm. great for Earl, and but Reyes was like 640. Yeah, I was I was gonna say I. This is really Look at this. a sloppy match. I, I mean, I, you know. well, it's a lot of. I I think it's a lot of heat. Um, you know, in the, a match like this. Both guys, it's more ego, I think, than the than anything else. They both want to win. 
because they're both at a similar you know level in there you know this means money this sponsors yeah these pockets play pretty big yeah something about there but i i love that i don't know well, don't forget there's one thing we're forgetting now. Humidity. The humidity. That's what I just said. That, yeah. And when, I just said that. When they played this on TV with the lights, it made the rails look feel very, very, very spongy, and therefore you could slop balls in. They know that, and that's why they're playing the balls that yeah. way. That's all it is. They would never play those shots on a regular cloth in a regular environment. So. There's a little tidbit that most people wouldn't read. Yeah, you know. the lights dry the table. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. When we used to play in Vegas, I would try and two-rail a bank. You know, in one pocket, you had that two-rail long bank. The ball went right in. <laughs> Let me ask you this, you guys. Uh, out of all the cities you ever played in, gambling or tournaments or whatever, what, what do you think the uh, most difficult... Uh, climate for us playing pool because Florida. Okay, but uh, same okay. Coast. Well, okay. I'm glad. But what I was going to say was, for most people at home, uh, people that don't know, uh, when you're in a like in Las Vegas, it plays really dry, or if you're in Florida, it's humid. So what it does is it makes the table play wet. The rails get to jumping around, and it's really fast. And it might even. I've played in places where, when the ball, cue ball hits the rail with any speed at all, it might go airborne. So uh, it makes it way more difficult to play in a humid environment. So Kim, where, where, what do you think? Well, I, I grew up in California. It was California really, is really too, isn't it? Dry as a bone out there. Really? So we didn't have no problem with humidity. And I had a little problem when I first took off on the road when getting down into Texas where I, I played a lot and it was humid. And uh, But I, I just adapted. Like, you know, you get to a pool table and you play and after a couple of racks, well, okay, you know, you know how it's going to play. So. Well, I'm going to give a shout out to a town that they know me well there. And I'm, there's no question, this, this city is the hardest place to play pool in for a lot of reasons. And it's New Orleans, Louisiana. You're, you know what? I was going to say that Earl Heisler, I played this guy, and the table is so wet. And I'm, I know people don't believe this. You know when you're driving a car and it has what they call a rooster tail on a real wet road? Yeah. When I hit the cue ball down like yeah. a kitty corner shot, water came behind the cue ball. Well, that's, yeah, that's I've why I was that before. Earl, uh, Believe me, I, I, I grew up in Jackson. It's only about 180 miles yep. from New Orleans. And it's no question. Not even close. Yeah, you're right. The most difficult city in America to play pool in. I was in the pool room, so I'm winning. This guy, Eddie Burton, I was playing this guy, Earl Heisler. I know Earl. 500 or 1,000 a game, one pocket. This is 50 years ago. About 11, 5 you were playing? In a pool room. No, but hey, he wore a glove. And I'd never seen that. I go, look at this guy, a glove. You know, now a lot of people wear them. Anyway, we're playing one pocket. And when I got ahead a couple games, the table didn't really play that horrible. Then Burton and then they called for the guy to start open steaming. The, no, open the door and steam the shrimp. And all of a sudden, I went <laughs> snow blind. I mean, they kept changing the... That's a true story. Remember Eddie Burton? You know, he was. Yeah, I knew it. He was a funny a guy. Of, I got a lot of stories I could tell about New Orleans. I'm not going to get into all of them, believe me. But I do know the city well. A lot of great people down there. Accepting the balls very well. From down there, I'll just flat out tell you because. But the bottom line is, they didn't like to see me come because, you know, when I went down there, I won the tournaments a lot of times, and the money got put up. I usually got it. They had, uh, when you played nine ball, if you broke many times, one or two balls that hit the, you know, like the corner balls would go off the table. It would go bing, bing, off the table. Yeah. I mean, I played the guy. Imagine this. I went snow. I used to spin the cue ball with a lot of English, okay? And in my pool room, I played like a genius. I never was exposed to this wet conditions. I used to play with a fat millimeter, which means the deflection. I'm getting into something. A little bit. But anyway, I would shoot like a spot shot, and with the English, I could be aiming almost to miss the entire ball with the English and the big fat shaft and so on with the deflection. I was playing the guy one pocket, and the last ball on the table was a, the ball in the spot. He put me on the side of the table, up table, where I had a kind of spin bank it towards my pocket. I missed the whole ball. Play a thousand a game. Larry Hubbard looked at me, he goes, what the are you doing? And after that, I just went blind because I was aiming so far away from the ball. 
I missed the whole ball because the, the, the humidity took the spin off of the cue ball. And after that, then when I went home, believe it or not, it was the greatest thing for me ever happened. Then I started hitting the cue ball a half a tip left and right of center. That's how I adjusted my game. And it turned out, especially like in Norfolk, when in the afternoon, Norfolk, tables played real easy. At nighttime, they filled the place, got real humid. A lot of guys couldn't play that well because the conditions changed. But I did because I used to use a half a tip and the cue ball didn't, didn't deflect that much. And I go back to that story because that's where... That's how I changed my game. Let's take a look here. Accustats. Interesting. 893. Earl has just raised his game up, and I think Efren was still around six, six something. So, and the score now is eight to one. Strickland going to 11, wow. and uh, uh, doesn't look good for Efren at all. Well, and he's got a good layout here, though. He's got an easy shot on the one. He's got. A, he has to run out every time he gets a chance, right? Don't you agree? I think sure, he has to get a score. Eight one. Let's see. Well, plus there's a point in a match where you just say, I can't win. You start freewheeling. It may happen to me all the time. Get ahead, you know, right? Yeah. Don't guys do that? Sure. Then they get close, then they get nervous again. <laughs> no, but they can. Yeah, you're right. They can, you know, because, you know, you're, you're figuring, oh, I have no chance to win. You win a couple games, a couple more, the guy gets weak. Next thing you know, it's like a battle. No that, question. That happens all the time. I, you know, I watched Efren, and I, and I was sitting there watching that match and trying to remember me and Johnny were sitting there together. Uh, I just don't remember him ever playing quite this poorly. I mean, ever. Well, it gets on your mind. I mean, the guy plays up until the finals incredible. I don't you know. Him. Well, no, he. No, I, I, no, I, was, to, I thought he hit this ball. What I was saying, ooh, he wow. got lucky. I, I was commenting on his shot. Yeah. Yeah, he's, you know, he shot that opposite handed. I know. Well, he's unbelievably left. Um, unbelievably a great player opposite handed. Yeah, he should be. He's all right in this. He's a little off, but. I think he's perfect. Huh? I he's think he's perfect. perfect here, yeah. Well, he's got to go up and down. He just can go two rails, wouldn't he? Or is it well, just one rail? No. One, two rails. Yeah, up, down, whatever. I mean, That's the truth. Well, like the way he landed the, there uh, at all. No. All due respect, he finished second two years. I don't the, like that. Oh, he should be. He should I'm be saying I'll get out, but I just, when you, when, you wouldn't want to be like there. Like have an angle, yeah. Oh, right. uh, yeah. yeah. But he can just pop. Well, he stopped it. Yeah, oh, my. He was trying to go ahead. Look what I he did. I like where he was at. It. Oh, my he shot, goodness. He shot the six wrong. He beat Nick. Well, but here, I am, here I am critiquing F. Right? Yeah, right. But, there you go. You know. Look at this. He was trying to pop ahead three, four inches. He stopped He's going to slow roll this. He was. He made it, though. Yeah, he hit it perfect. He made it, killed the ball. I'll bet he makes this. We have another bet, right? I owe you again. There you go. Ephraim. You know those on those uh, wet tape? Look, look, I'm sorry, look how far he went up. Well, yeah, because he made balls. Yeah, but how you jump that far, Mikey? Well, because you make balls every time you make a ball and you, you, you move. I who, shot the, who shot the greatest score in, in tournament history? In a finals, you're talking about? Yep. Who shot the greatest score? You'll never guess this in a million years. I know I won uh, the uh, no, no, K no. no, I'm telling you, I won the K-Sun Pro Open in uh, Nashville, and I shot in the high 900s. But no, perfect score, 1,000. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. no. Perfect score. Who shot that? In a 30,000 first prize tournament on television. Who did it? Oh, I don't know. Huh? <laughs> no, perfect score. Wade Crane. Yeah, Billy Wade Johnson. There you go. You shot a that. perfect... Yeah. I didn't catch that. Yeah, yeah, that you know that score. You know that uh, Earl. Uh, it wasn't too long ago, maybe three or four years ago, played Ephraim in the finals out in Riviera at the World's Championship, and, and I think he beat him maybe eleven to or nine to three or. I don't know if we were going to 11 or 9 at the time. It, it's been some years. Back. He missed he, another ball. He beat him so bad, just like he's beating him here. And, and this might be man on Epson's mind. This sloppy. And that match, by the way, was live. Let's talk about who beat Earl the worst. Now, I know you have a story. <laughs> what did you I have a story? Yeah, I thought you. Then we talk about what, how you beat Earl in a big tournament, a world tournament. What was the score? Race to well, I've beat him a couple of times in terms. Oh, I think 
Oh, you're right. talking about when he had me six to nothing. No, 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 you no. beat him three matches. Three right? matches. Oh, at the World's five. Championship in 92. Two. Yeah, I beat him uh, 15, to, 15 to one. <laughs> But, but was it was a race to five, race, race to, to five, five right. race to five. Which I like and, and then I was in the semifinals and everything got changed because of television. And then it went from three out of five to a race to 11. And it's kind of, it was my own fault. I kind of blew my psyche on that. And that's the way it was. And that's so, the year Archer had won in 1992. Yeah, now we can do the Earl bashing. So I beat Earl in Germany 11 to one. That was a pretty good accomplishment. It's just yeah. the way it turned out. The conditions were easy. I just broke out of shot, broke out of shot. Earl was sitting in that chair like a mouse. You know, you see how he is there. Of course, I've gotten pounded on, too, here and there. But uh, it was I never funny, I thought. Uh, only one time. The only time I beat Earl, we were, doing, we were gambling at a game uh, called golf. But anyway... I, never, I only played Earl, I think, twice, and he beat me both times. Yeah. Uh, well, he, I wasn't, he wasn't easy to beat. Let's. <laughs> I did beat Efren at the U.S. Open, uh, like eleven to four. Oh. I think it was one time, and on the loser side. So that was, that was pretty good beating. And uh, this match is out of hand. What score? Nine. It'd be nine to one. Should nine, nine to two. two. I mean, they, you know, I mean, I'm really, you know, the way I'm, pre I mean, this match nine to two, but Earl has made a lot of significant mistakes. You know, here's what it is. When you're playing a match, you think this, that, and the other thing. And then when you watch it, it is, I made a mistake here. I mean, it's, it well, happens, you know? I, nine to two. I think it's, I think it's all over. Hopeless and now, hopeless. What do you mean? Ephraim wins this. <laughs> right? Oh, I told them I shouldn't have said that. Yeah, I don't that. think so. Thank you. We congratulate you on another great open championship well, and many more to come. In the I mean, nine to two. If it was the other way around, nine to two. If Efren oh yeah, had uh, Earl, Earl could win. Two, I think Earl would have a chance to come back and win. I played I, Earl just my in opinion. the U.S. Open sometime. I had him eight to two, my break, and I sensed something like as I'm stroking, something just came over me. Next time I shot, it was ten eight his favor. But I won the match, 10-10. I won the match 11-10, but I'm just telling you right now, he won eight games in a row so fast, I didn't have time to breathe, and he was ahead 10-8. I mean, it's just that, and, you know, that works on me. I mean, and he's one of them few guys that can do that. The next match is really going to be something. Again, match six, our final match in the series, is going to be Kim Davenport versus Johnny Archer. That was, now what was that match? That was a world Nin championship? 1995 uh, Pro Tour Championship. Pro Tour Championship. So in the Pro Tour, that was like the tournament, yeah. right? Yeah, it, it was, it was a, quite a big tournament, yes. Left-hand corner. That'll well, be, all these matches are phenomenal. I mean, this particular match is a little out of hand. That happens sometimes, but almost all these other matches are... What's, he's going to bank this? There ain't no telling. Oh, he he's just, he's, he's just in full rhythm right now. Yeah, right. Well, there's one man standing with that was That, that match was you and uh, Johnny was uh, the greatest comeback that there ever was on, on uh, a match, right? Uh, televised. That, that's what they say, the greatest televised match. So, uh, that's what I meant. I'm sorry. Yeah. So here we go. So uh, Ephraim is helpless. Uh, yeah. It's it's like he's he's got his nose pressed against the glass, looking inside the candy store. He's really yeah. he's really he needs some uh, help here. No, I mean again, now I'm I was out of the game, you know, and I saw Reyes come up. Uh, I played him many times, but here it's a little, you know, he's just not himself. Well, you know? Earl is Earl has beaten up Ephraim so many times. Look at this shot, nice shot, Earl. He makes both balls. You know, this, this just, just got, he's got a perfect angle. Yeah. Just enough angle. He can jack up a little bit. Pounded. Fired two reels. Yeah, so he's, he's I think this match really was over before it started because, like I said, Earl had beaten him so bad out in Vegas at the live tournament. Uh, Ephraim just was afraid of him. I really believe it. But didn't they just... I'm sure he was. Who, what wouldn't, who wouldn't be afraid of Earl's... <laughs> but hadn't they just played a huge money match? Two. 
Yeah, exactly. but that didn't matter. They were playing to 120. This is this is a race to 11, and you, the pressure is all over you. You know, 100. Yeah, that goes back know. to that pressure thing again. See, to me, a race to 11, one match TV, it's one time. When I think well, the title's right. worth more than the money. Yeah, right. When I was in the in the finals, I didn't care about the money. I don't care how much. Well, the only time I cared about the money is when I played the first match with Lori John and with Reyes. Those now we're talking. Well, that was real money. Hundred and fifty thousand first prize. Hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand first prize for pool. That's pretty big. So you know, I was thinking well, I could do something with that. <laughs> You know, we're sitting here t saying that about Efren, but still, what he did, though, from 1994 through 1997 is really... Oh, no, it's incredible. He made the, he made the finals four straight years. That is, that is unbelievable. Won't happen again in my lifetime. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, he's left an indelible mark on the game of pocket players. No Efren question. Rays, one of the all-time greats by far. That can't be denied. Yeah, I think he's by far the, uh, you know, one pocket. He was by far the best player. I, yeah, I believe that eight ball. I believe eight ball too. Yeah, I, I believe. I believe with the full racks except uh, straight pull. That uh, that straight pull. I mean, one pocket rotation and eight ball. I think he was the best. Yeah, he was the best in my lifetime. As we both know, this, the scores could he's just he's just having a tough time. He's struggling, you know. <laughs> right now, it's just so yeah, I'd have to disagree with that. So you know, I, I don't want to say anything, but you know, my record speaks for itself. So as far as uh, <laughs> as far as what everything straight pull, eight ball, nine ball. No, I didn't say straight pull. I excluded straight pull. He said, well, eight ball. I might have said it, but I didn't. Uh, rotation. 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 Oh, rotation. Yeah. 15 ball rotation. Yeah, yeah, ball rotation. If rotation. I said straight pull, I apologize right. because oh, no, no, no. No, he couldn't beat you ever playing straight pull. No. But one pocket, yeah, one eight pocket ball. Was. Eight ball, I'd have to disagree rotation. with you. Okay. But, you know. You that's guys just, played one. That's just me. I mean, well, oh, you've got to disagree because yeah. you know your your ego. You was a great well, player. I mean, how could you not? I mean, I know. You know, you have to disagree. But well, I mean, Mike. Uh, I mean, Mike was great, un unbelievable, and you might be right. I mean, I don't know about the eight ball. The one pocket is the only one I would definitely give Efren the title on. I sort of agree with Kim. I know you were. You would be really close. I'd love to see you in your prime. Yeah, we only played eight ball a couple of times. You know, right, that's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. That's not fair when you played him then. You had retired. You can say, you know, he was a little older and, and also, but still, that wasn't really fair for you to be up in that spot, you know, to You mean to in that to, big match? In that big match to well, judge. I, I had been won, retired judge who for won it. 20 years. You know, that, that was not fair for to judge yeah. that. You know, if he would have played you back in 1982 or 85, you know, and even if he, at his level, uh, I believe, you know, it would have been a different outcome possible. Oh, without a doubt, it could have been a different outcome. Right. That's, that's just my could opinion. Could have been. Everybody has an opinion on it, you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Everybody. But uh, ProBreezeTour.com, we're, uh, we're going to be uh, streaming 75 matches here, and, you know, and possibly many more. Uh, you know, join in with us. We've got great things coming. Uh, like Mike said, the pro tips. Uh, a lot of things we'll be do, uh, great things that we're going to be doing. I'm trying to figure out. Is this match is still going, going, right? Is the match still going? Of course it's still What's going. What's the score? Oh, there's Pat Fleming. But you know him? Talk about, do I know? I'm trying to figure out if I even have a pro tip. Oh, I have pro tips. Have, I mean, I'm more in right. Mike's pro tips. Yeah, you I'm can borrow my pro tips. Pat Fleming, now we're looking at him on the screen. Uh, he did the AccuStats. He did the uh, tournament director. Tournament director. Uh, he really revolutionized the statistics in pool, like how guys play, the averages, all that kind of stuff. Almost like, you know, kind of like golf. They got all these different statistics. And uh, he's still out there. I believe he just sold part of his company, if I'm not mistaken. But. He's still involved, and he will be involved with us. I'm pretty sure of that, right? Yes. Pat Fleming. He was a great man. Had a great vision to keep stats and come up with a, a formula to keep them, too. So it's a, it's a great thing. Reyes is over the line. I saw that, but what are you going to do? 
He does a lot of, uh, Pat does a lot of pay-per-view, too. I think he's the only one that does that right now. I believe so. His yeah. matches. In fact, I made a fortune with him because in the day, you know, they used to pay us for the videos. Like, well, you know, some of the, my... Oh, listen, I remember that. My check was bigger than yours that one year. What do you mean oh, you made well, a fortune? I remember that. We were all, you know, there was just yeah. five or six of the top players. We all got our checks and we all went to our rooms. Oh, we all were in one room together. And we were like, huh? it was like, you know, Yeah, but Christmas over the years, cards. even after I retired, the, the, the straight pool matches, two or three of those, the Zuglin Rempe, those are still going on. I just got a check. You're still getting money? Yes. I'm still getting well, money. Nice. I just got a check uh, a year and a half ago. Oh, I haven't got Thank a check. He told me not to say years. that. Yeah. Does this ball go, Mike? No. It's dead. The five doesn't go. It's, it's going to hit here. It looks High. like it. It doesn't go. Was he playing it? Doesn't go. I agree with you. Doesn't go. Doesn't go. Well, you've probably seen it before. Doesn't go. No, oh, we tried to it cut it out. No. I, I was agreeing. I thought he was going to. Uh, hit it off the six. Yeah, he but, did. Yeah, but I think the only way he could have made it possible. No, but I mean, hit it on the other side of the ball. Down. Forced that old it down. trick shot would have been the only way. I think Neither one of you guys know what you're talking about. Okay. Right. Well, well, at least we yeah. agreed on it. I've been listening yeah. to you guys I talk. Look at this. Look, look how he does that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Pearl the Pearl. It was just, now, this is a tough Pearl. situation. I think I can't remember. I know I had seen this match. Months ago, you know, just browse. Well, I'm telling you, he runs out. He, What's well, he, he must, Jack up and he it? must because he wins 11 to well, three. He, three. Two two three. he goes around the table. He yes, no scratch to it inside. He didn't hit hard. Oh, the scratch. seven's up there. I thought the seven was below the ball. Perfect. Earl. Well, your stroke gets loose when you're ahead 10 to three. Let me tell you a little story about Earl while he's running out. He told me, he says, listen, I'm not associating with no top players. I'm not associating with no players. I'm staying by myself. And he's telling me this. And, and he didn't want to talk to you or he didn't want to do anything. He wanted to stay away from you. Look at him. Look at and he told me, he says, Yes? What did he tell you? Anyway, you kind of interrupted me. But that's all right. So, and, and he could be downright ornery and sometimes mean to you. But it seemed to work for him. I mean, that's what, that was his plan. Stay away from anybody that played pool in the tournament and just leave them alone. And that's exactly what he done for decades. Yeah. And, and he became a great player. I never could do it. Yeah. I, you know, I, we always went out to dinner, you know what I'm saying, or done this. He said this four but, times. But staying away, I did that for a while, staying away from the players because you show weakness. You're playing the same guys over and over again. Once they learn how you are, they get friendly with you, and you can get beat real easy. I did it for. I used to stay at a different hotel a lot of times, where to turn up. That's where I met Fuzzy Zeller at the BC Open. Stay at a different hotel. Guys would call my room four in the morning, if I'm in the final day or something, you know. So I just that's what I did. Tiger does the same thing. Tiger Woods. Now, Tiger don't stay. Now he's friendly, hotel. but he doesn't win anymore. We're done. Our next show. Our next show. Our next show is. The sixth show is Johnny Archer playing, who is that again? Oh, yeah, this guy, Kim Davenport. With Never. The, with the long hair. But there my, you go. My hair, I cut my hair, I think. Yeah, and you know, when you cut that hair, you never won again. That was your problem. I heard that somewhere. <laughs> anyway, uh, for Mike Siegel, Reed Pierce, Kim Davenport, we hope you enjoyed it. Look forward to seeing the next match.